said your love Say this after me. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm sure. Praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumbered. Praise when surrounded. <laughs> Cause praise is the waters my enemies drowning. Cause as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise. When I don't, I praise cause I know you're still in control. Hallelujah. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. Praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. All right. As long as I'm breathing, Got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you.
quiet. My God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? Let me tell you what. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? Shout it. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how could I keep it inside? Praise. Breath. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. church that is a church igniting the world with the loving presence yes. of God here on site and all around and we want to give a big shout to our live stream uh, congregation to everyone up in the Bay Area let's give a big shout out to the Golden Gate Glory Center this morning yes we welcome you and all around the country folks tuning in as well as those that will be um, watching this uh, a little bit later uh, but we just love you. We praise the Lord for you. We're excited that you're a part of this ministry. And this morning is a beautiful day of the Lord. It's it a is. It's a wonderful time to gather as God's people, to worship him, to praise him, and to hear from him, and to have our lives changed. And because our lives are changed, it changes the whole world. Amen? So we're so excited about that. Yes. Um, so we've got a, just for those of you that are guests this morning, on the last section of your welcome program, you'll see that there is a connection card. You can just tear that off, fill it out, put it in the offering basket at the back door, social hall, or the front door as you leave. And we want to connect with you. We'll send you a thank you note for being here in a small gift. So also on the back of that, for everyone, we have the uh, prayer uh, prayer requests and praise reports. So if you've got something that God's been doing in your life and you want to share, just let us know a praise report. If you've got a need or someone you know has a need, please fill that out. Pop it in the basket at the end of the service. And for everyone else, if you prefer, you can email us with your prayer request or praise report at prayer at glorycenter.com. Amen. Yes, amen. And there's ways to give. Yes. In our offering, we have four ways in which we can give. Oh, I feel like I'm in a little tunnel or something. Uh, okay, we can bring a check, the old-fashioned way, the old-school way, that's fun, <laughs> and cash. Uh, we do have a giving page at the church's website, which we can do. And um, we have a text to give or um, on-site envelopes. We have those here as well. So there's lots of ways to give. Uh, and not only your money, but your time and talent. We have lots of opportunities, you know, for you yeah. to sign up for ministries and things like that. So we're, we're glad that we have that opportunity. Um, today at 3 o'clock, we are having, well, actually, we're not having, but uh, T. Lily is having a lip sync. We have a little thing in your uh, brochure here about that. So today at Roscoe's from 3 to 6, T. Lily's having an anniversary lip sync. So... Gosh, come on down and enjoy the fellowship and enjoy, you know, T. Lily's program. We want to be supportive of that uh, today as well. So that's coming up. Um, our Father's Heart Ministry has donation boxes, uh, both in the uh, overflow and out front there. Always encouraged to bring things. And believe it or not, I know it seems like a far ways away, but May is right around the corner and that's Gay right. Pride is the 19th of May. So please start to mark that on your calendar and we're gonna be a marching and invite friends and families and it's just a really good way for outreach. So mark that on your calendars, lots going on uh, here at the Glory Center. Amen, all right. Well, all of, all of those announcements are good and you have a mm -hmm. little prayer for us as we kick off our service today. Well, I'd love to, Pastor, because we wanna get right into it. Uh, just wanna also say thanks to the band uh, I just love that praise song. Yeah. And you can praise anywhere, right? Amen. When stuff, when you feel down, 
when you feel frustrated, when you feel stressed, you just praise, praise the Lord. I was praising the Lord in my car this week one day. I was particularly frustrated. And so I just said, Lord, I'm just going to praise you right now. And it Amen. just made a huge difference. So uh, thanks for doing that song. And, and we love to have that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we thank you that you are who you are, Lord. We thank you that you hear our prayers, that you hear our praises, God. We are honored to praise you and honored to be in your presence, Lord. Come in a mighty way. Lord, anoint our pastor as she delivers your word, God, and prepare our hearts and our ears and our eyes and our minds for that word, Lord, because we thirst after it. Lord, we thank you for... Um, the ability to meet. We thank you for this safe place. Lord, we thank you for all those that are here and all those that are out, uh, outside and on the airwaves, Lord. We just thank you for, um, just we thank you for all you are, Lord, in our lives and for your character, that you are always consistent, God. You're always there for us, Lord. You always have our back and we can always rely on you. In Jesus' name, we dedicate this service to you, Lord. Amen. Rise as you're able. We're going to continue with our praise and our worship today. Thanks, Corey. Strong enough to calm the storm. Oh, your love is strong. 
Yeah. 
up, we fall down, but we get up, we fall down, but we get up, for a saint is just a sinner who fell down. But there's always that part, but we got up. Never forget, never forget. Amen. It happened. It happened. Jesus, Jesus rose, rose from, from the, dead. the dead. He defeated, he defeated sin, sin and death, and death forever. forever. It happened. It happened. The stone, the stone was, rolled was rolled away. away. Jesus, Jesus walked, walked out, out, of, out the of the tomb and, and he lives. lives. Forever. forever. And, now, and that now that Easter's, Easter's over, over, it's our, it's turn. our turn. We have been, we have born, been again born again into a new life. life. We are dead to sin, but alive to God. No longer slaves to this world, but set free to pursue God's righteousness and embrace the gift of eternal life. We have been bought with a high price through Christ's redeeming blood. We have been made temples of God's spirit, free from condemnation and reconciled to the Father. Though we may struggle here on earth, we press forward to our eternal homeland, walking in faith and with confident hope that the one who began this good work will bring it to completion. Jesus rose and the gates of heaven opened, and that victory alone means that nothing can separate us from God's love. This is why we hope. This is why we worship. This is why we give. This is why we go, pray, baptize, teach, and preach. And we'll never have to do this alone, for Jesus will be with us always until the very end. Easter may be over, but for us, it's also just begun. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning with all of you. Let's give a big shout out to our audio team. They're trying a lapel mic on me this morning. Didn't work last week and they're desperate to get a lapel mic on me so I have both my hands free to praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Well, this morning we're going to continue on with what we started last week and the title is called Aligning with Heaven. Uh, I've just been praying since Easter, since it seemed like the end of our Miracle Seed campaign. And I was asking the Lord, where do we go from here? What is it that you're doing? And uh, the Lord began to kind of show me some things. And so I want to um, share that with you. So it's about God's timing. So turn your neighbor and say, we got to be in time with what God is doing in the earth. <laughs> and, and then it's also about our praise life. It's about um, connecting with God in praise. And so last week we talked about that. We're going to end the service today like we did last week. We're going to grow to a new dimension of praise at the Glory Center. Yeah. Amen. So those of you that came here and you thought that you could just be a spectator, I want you to change your mind right now. Let's get a new mindset. You're going to be a participant in praising the Lord Jesus Christ, our exalted God, our God who's the overcoming God, amen, our God who is victorious. We're going to align with heaven with our praise and with God's timing, amen. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we talked about last week, add some new things, and, um, and then I want to just share a couple ways that uh, the word praise um, operates in our lives. So turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to learn something this morning, okay? But also, we're here not just to learn something, we're here to shift everything in our life for the better. 
Because when we get in, in alignment with heaven, we're getting in alignment with God. You see, the enemy operates in your life when you're in agreement with the enemy. If you agree that the you know that everything's going to hell in a handbasket, and then everything's going to hell in a handbasket, <laughs> right? And so last week we talked about how we're in a season of warfare, and you have to identify uh, what the enemy is doing, but you don't agree with what the enemy is doing. We don't agree with sickness, do we? We don't agree with um, with uh, just. Uh, depression. We don't agree with fear. We don't agree with anxiety. We don't agree with uh, division. We don't agree with strife. We don't agree with anything that comes from the pit of hell. We agree with God and we align ourselves with God. We get into agreement with God and it shifts your life. It shifts your heart and then it shifts your life. It shifts your home and everything about you and then it shifts the atmosphere. So this morning, we're not just having church. Why is it important for you to be here? Because today is a defining moment when God calls us together so that you're not doing it alone. What I'm telling you to do this morning, you can do alone. We're doing it together because there's power in corporate praise and worship and hearing the word together. We're like an army that God is gathering so you're not alone. Amen? And it's to encourage you and to strengthen you. Otherwise, when you're off by yourself, you think, I must be going crazy. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going crazy too. Hallelujah. We're all going crazy. God is moving. Amen. Just when you thought you were going off the deep end, we're all going off the deep end because God is with us and he's going to, he's with us and he's going to lift us up again. Amen. God is lifting people right now out of a pit and putting you into a spacious place, right? And so that's why our, our, our time together is so important. If you can't be here live on site, and I'm telling you, you need to be here online and on site, then get in on the, the live stream. If you can't get in on the live stream, and then watch it after, but we have to all be together because that's what a church does, is a church provides a covering for you. That's why the enemy can't have full reign in your life, because the church provides a covering for you. Because God, what did Jesus say? I, I'm not e- anywhere in my slides or my sermon. This is all off the cap. <laughs> what did Jesus say? I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not withstand, it will not prevail. And that's why I have never, since I was a young girl, been outside of a church. I've always been a member of a church. And that's why my life has always been going upwards in Christ Jesus and not going up and down. People say, Pastor Sandy, how could you come out and how could you? It was difficult, but I was still going upwards in Christ Jesus because we have to be a part of the body of Christ. And there's too many people, whether you're LGBT, whether you're divorced, whether you're, you, you fell out with your last pastor, there's too many people who are Christians who believe in Jesus, but they're outside of a body. They are not connected in, and the enemy is trying to pick them off and most likely will pick them off. That's why we have to be in the body, connected in the body. Turn your neighbor and say, I'm connected to you whether you like it or not. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm connected to you, right? So all of that was free. Amen. Amen. I wanted to give you a couple announcements before I get into the word today. And uh, the first is on the back of your, um, your glory news. But um, on June 9th, I've been invited that whole weekend, and our church is invited. You are invited. But uh, Pastor Liliana and her church have translated my book, God's Gay Agenda, into Spanish. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It was first released in English here on site at our All Nations Gathering in 2012. 
Then two years later, Ebal translated it into Mandarin, and we did a big book tour, and it was released in 2014, 2015 into Taiwan, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, all of that. And now it's being translated, it has been translated, and it's being published, and it's being released in Spanish on June 9th, that whole weekend. So Pastor Liliana um, is inviting us to come, and of course Janet and I will be there. Uh, I'm sure that Marvin's gonna try to be there as well. They fell in love with Marvin at their last conference. Uh, they moved their conference instead of having it in October following our conference like they did last year, and there were about 25 of us that went out last year. Uh, we had our All Nations gathering here at the end of September, the first week of October. We were all in Mexico City. This year, they're having it that same weekend. So they're, they're having their 15-year anniversary as a church. On, um, I think it's like, a, uh, what is, like the 7th, 8th, and 9th, that whole weekend. And then there's also going to be the book launch for God's Gage in, in Spanish. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, Pastor Liliana, a year ago, was invited to go to an inclusive pastor for Spanish-speaking countries, they had an inclusive pastor conference in Colombia. And she went there, there were about 30 pastors of churches all over from South America, Central America, Costa Rica, Panama, uh, churches represented in Puerto Rico, churches represented in Brazil, and although they're not Spanish speaking, they're Portuguese, but uh, all these pastors got together, Pastor Liliana was there. And so what she has done is for this Spanish speaking version of the book, God's Gay Agenda, is she's invited some of those pastors, sent them the manuscript, they're doing reviews and they're going to be publishing those reviews in the book as well. And so it's gonna be a book for Central and South America and anybody in North America that speaks Spanish. So let's give a shout to the Lord, amen. So God. Yes, yes, an explosion in Latin America. What I love about it is um, I was born in the Dominican Republic, Spanish speaking, Although Haiti, who joins the island, is French-speaking, Dominican Republic is Spanish-speaking. And then my parents, after we lived there for many years, I was evacuated out when I was five with my family. We ended up in Panama, Spanish-speaking. Ended up in Uruguay for six years, uh, Montevideo, Uruguay, Spanish-speaking. Then my parents were in Mexico City for about 20 years. So all of my young life, I was always in Spanish-speaking countries. So what I love about going to Mexico City to be with Pastor Liliana is that I feel like part of my life is there. And so this book in Spanish is really, it's really moving. It's, it's really powerful because um, we've grown to love Asia because of Janet back in 1999 answering the call to go to Taiwan. We've learned to love Asia. Denise and Diane are here, spent 15 years as missionaries in our churches in Taiwan, ministering all over those nations. And now we get to have a bigger part of what's happening in Central and South America. So we want to praise the Lord for that. Amen. So God is doing some awesome things. Praise God. And so I thank the Lord for that. And then also, I, I, you'll notice on the back that today is T. Lilly's event. Janet and I forgot about that. I thought it was uh, next week. So uh, that event is happening today. T. Lilly's been a good friend of our church. And um, if you can go support this anniversary, it's her four-year anniversary uh, being at the Roscoe Lounge. And um, she does her little grandma skits and all that kind of stuff. And so it's for adults. Um, you have to be over 21. I think somebody snuck some young folks in last time, but anyway, um, it's a $5 cover charge, and so we encourage you, if you can, if you want to go to that, please do go to that, and we'll support T. Lilly. Amen. Okay, so back to today. So today we're talking about aligning with heaven, and um, so I mentioned last week some things, and I want to kind of go over a few things about the time that we are in. So we want to talk about God's timing. So first of all, um, I, 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 the next slide has a picture there. And um, the Passover has, is, is usually the Hebrew month of Passover. Um, and according to Exodus, when the first Passover happened, God said to Moses 
that this is now your first month. So Passover is the first month in the Jewish calendar, okay? And so we are now in a season for the Hebrew nation, for those that are um, looking at God's timetable, because we switched over as Christians about the third century. We got rid of our uh, biblical roots and the biblical calendar, the Jewish calendar, the Hebrew calendar that had the feasts. And the feasts, according to Leviticus 23, the feasts are in Hebrew, it's moeds, it's God's appointed times. The first time you see Moed is in Genesis chapter 2, where God is creating um, the heavens and the earth and, and the, the sky and the this and the seasons. And when it says the word seasons, it's saying Moed. So a lot of people believe that when God created earth, that God's timetable of these feasts, which are revelation for Christians of what Jesus did and what Jesus is doing, that God set it in the earth. So God's calendar is really important. We don't talk about God's calendar a lot because we're all part of the Roman calendar. I like the Roman calendar because my birthday is in October. And uh, 1960, so now you know how old I am. So my, I like the Roman calendar. The Roman calendar is a good calendar. It's been good to me. But the Hebrew calendar is the year 5784, 5784. So God's calendar continued from the biblical word. There are set times. And so this Easter, we finished our Easter service on March 30th. We had a great Easter service, right? And it was a beautiful time. But Easter did not coincide this year with Passover. Why is that? Because we're in a leap year. So there were two months that were added in the Hebrew calendar. There was a Dar 1, a Dar 2. Now we're in Nisan. Everybody say Nisan. Nisan. Now you know Hebrew. So we're, we are in the month of Nisan. So Passover actually is coming up after next Sunday on Monday through the following thir uh, the 30th. So Passover, uh, when Jesus died on the cross as the Passover lamb, and then three days later resurrected, right, from the dead, that didn't happen historically until uh, 5,784 years ago, coming up in, in the next few days. Is everybody, did I, did I get you all confused? Okay, so that's God's calendar. So I was praying about what to do and the Lord spoke to me um, through a teaching that I was listening to and it said, uh, it said that yeah, and our 200 days was leading us up in our miracle campaign to Easter Sunday because I knew that Passover was really important. And um, the reason why I knew that Passover is really important, there's a prophetic word by Chuck Pierce about, about angels surrounding the United States. And at Passover, these 51 angels, there would be an angel assigned to every state. And so I want my angel in California. I don't want him just surrounding Cal uh, the United States. I want my angel in California doing what it's supposed to be doing. Amen? And so um, anyway, but this is the year 2024. Uh, this is the Hebrew year. Uh, the letters are, are pictures like Chinese letters, and it looks like an open door. And so this is the year of the open door, and we're now approaching Passover, which is a very strategic month. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that, but this is a Passover time when God brought deliverance to the people who were stuck in Egypt. God brought them out of Egypt because they applied the blood of the lamb, right? And so they applied the blood of the lamb on their doorposts, and so they were, they were released. Finally, Pharaoh said, okay, you can go and take your people. They were released in one night. Isn't that good news? And that's a picture of our salvation. So I, wanna, I want us to go through a couple more slides. The next slide is, um, this is a picture that Chuck Pierce had somebody kind of put together. Uh, there, there were four, he had a vision of four ruling angels angels that came from heaven around the United States. Uh, this happened about, I believe, in July of 22. He saw this vision. I thought it was actually last year in 23. I believe it was actually the year before. 
Then he saw 51 angels, and he knew immediately that there was an angel for every state. And that at Passover, uh, that these angels would be released to every state. But praise the Lord, the United States of America is covered by angels. So let's just give a shout to the Lord, right? So we thank the Lord. Do you know that this is also, I mentioned this last, um, last week, that this is a decade of war. So in 2020 to 2030, everybody say, I'm going to live to 2030. <laughs> okay. From 2020 to 2030, we're in a decade of war, right? And so in 2020, there was the global pandemic. We talked last week about how that was an a, a alliance of the enemy, a demonic alliance of the enemy to bring death and infirmity and all this kind of stuff. And it was, it was a, a very difficult thing to break. But we all made it through that global pandemic. It wasn't just a sickness or a virus. It was actually a demonic alliance that came against the, 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 the whole world, really. And Doug Addison, I shared last, last week, he, he really had a, a revelation that it was to stop the global revival, that God has a revival of his spirit. And so it was a way of the enemy to shut churches, to close churches. Many churches shut their doors. Many pastors had to, had to stop pastoring. Uh, many people stopped going to church. Uh, statistics show, the Pew Report has shown that it's a kind of a research group. They have shown that since 2020's pandemic, that in California, we were the last state out of all the states to open our church doors. We were shut for a year and a half. We were the last state to open our doors until a church in Pasadena sued the governor of California and the state of California. And finally, they won, and we were able to have church in California. I don't know if you guys know all of that, right? So our doors were shut for a year and a half. Since the pandemic, the Pew Report studies show that in 2023 and in 2024, 30, they thought originally 30% of Christians who loved the Lord, who loved Jesus Christ, who were going to church every week, 30% of Christians stopped going to church, period. In 2024, they did the study again. Now it's up to 40% of, of Christians that love the Lord they stopped going to church. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's not good. It's not going to happen at the Glory Center. Right? See, that's what the enemy wanted to do was to stop a revival of God's spirit, stop a, a revival of God's spirit. So what happened? People got distracted. People became apathetic. People started, uh, you know, first it was, well, I'll just live stream when I feel like it. And then, oh, I got stuff to do on Sunday. I'll watch it tomorrow. Then maybe the next day, the next day. Finally, you just, eventually, you stop going. Why? Because we need to be connected right? We need one another. The church was meant to be connected. God wants us all together. We have to stop being disconnected and we need to be connected. Live stream connects us as well, but we need to have the body connected once again. So turn to your neighbor and say, you're stuck with me. <laughs> and I'm just telling you today, and I'm going to keep harping on this every single week. <clears throat> As your pastor, I'm telling you, you need to be in church every Sunday. If you go on vacation, go have a vacation, but be at church every Sunday. If there's a football game, be at church every Sunday. And tape the game or go see it later. If there's a Dodger game, be at church every Sunday. Or watch the day, I'm serious. There's been so many ways that the enemy has tried to pull people out of church, and some of it is fun things. Let me tell you, there's nothing better for you, nothing more fun in this world, nothing more satisfying than being in church together and growing together and moving forward in victory. <clears throat> Amen? So we need to be together. So those of you that have been coming once a month, Turn to your neighbor and say, get your butt in church every Sunday. Yeah. One of the things that I notice is that, is that a lot of our folks were having to work on Sunday. So we just decree right now that people's work schedules will open up. We need to be in church. Right? Now, 
<clears throat> God's not legalistic. Pastor Sandy's not legalistic, but this just happens to be when we gather. And I'm telling you, if we met on Saturday night, I say, be at church on Saturday night, but we meet on Sunday morning, be at church on Sunday morning. Stop staying at home. Stop going to football games during church. Be a part of the body of Christ. Did I step on enough toes this morning? Amen? Okay, so we want to grow this church. We can't grow the church if you're not here. I, 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 are we all together with that? All right. Because who's going to invite their family and friends if you're not here, right? Now, some people say, well, Pastor Sandy, I, I can watch it live stream, and then I can go off and do my other thing. That's great. But if you can drive here and be here in person, do it. Why? Because of body ministry. You need to have a donut and a cup of coffee with somebody. You need to be here every Sunday to have a cup of coffee and encourage somebody else and pray for somebody else. Because we're part of the body and part of what happens is not just the worship and the teaching, but we need to talk to one another and pray with one another. And that doesn't happen if you're at home in your pajamas or driving a car on your way to some game and tuning in. You need to be in church. Okay? All right. So that's enough. Those of you that are live streaming, welcome. We're so glad that you're with us. No. We, we have people in San Francisco that would give their back teeth if they could be here on Sunday. And we have people who live here that will not drive five minutes to walk through these doors. Be at church on Sunday. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to pastoring. No, I'm serious. We are trying to grow this church, and we can't grow unless we're united. If you think this church is going to continue, if you are on the sidelines, it won't. We are at a critical time for this church. We've got to get united. We've got to show up. We've got to be together. We have to minister to one another. We have to come on Sundays or whenever we open and our iConnect groups, we have to do that. And there are people who are tuning in around the US, they're live streaming, they're being blessed, they're part of our body. But if you can be here, you need to be here. And we need to start inviting people. All right? All right, okay, well that was all free. Let's get to my notes. So Passover was part of a word by Chuck Pierce that angels were gonna be released into the United States, into every state, that this is a critical moment, this Passover. I thought Passover was on March 30th when our Easter happened. And then I was praying after, I was saying, Lord, what are we to do? And then I heard another teaching by Chuck Pierce, and he said, praise the Lord, I'm looking forward to Passover. He goes, Passover is coming April 22nd to April 30th. And then in my spirit, I thought, we have another month that we need to believe for miracles. We have another month of the Miracle Seed Campaign for Explosion. Turn your neighbor and say, we're getting into God's timing right now. We're getting into God's timing. So we kicked off the Miracle Seeds Campaign believing that we would what? One, give our seed to the Lord. How many of you have given breakthrough seeds, right? And breakthroughs beginning to come up, right? You're beginning to see breakthrough in your life. That's because we've given breakthrough seeds, and you can still give today your breakthrough offering. Amen? Uh, and so it's powerful. Number two is that we were praying, and so we want to continue to pray over the next couple of weeks until April 30th because we're getting into alignment with God, right? What are we praying for? We're praying for miracles. We're praying for every seat in this place to be full. We're praying that we, when we invite a family or a friend or a coworker, they're gonna say yes, not maybe. 
We're inviting God to do miracles financially in this church. We want to be in San Francisco. We want to be able to see that church of staff. We're expanding. We're, we're, we're expanding our ministry. How can we do that? We need to give. We need to sow seeds and we need to pray. And the third thing is we need to invite people to come to church with us. Amen? So turn to your neighbor and say, I need to start inviting. I need to start praying. I need to start giving. Amen? All right. I didn't see too many people turning to your neighbor on that. All right. So we're getting into alignment. So it's not, it's not over. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's not over. It's not over. Okay, something else that I learned, um, let's go to the next slide. Something else that I learned is the Passover is in the first month, right? So we are in a month called Nisan. The month of Nisan, the, the root word actually means miracles. So we right now are in a season, and if you were Jewish, you would right now be expecting miracles from God. You would have your expectation level, your faith level at the highest level out of every month because in Nisan, they recognize that, that, you know, so many years ago, they were released out of bondage miraculously, supernaturally because of what God did. So every single month of Nisan, when they have Passover, they're saying, God, you got us out of 400 years of bondage. You set us free. You brought us through a Red Sea on dry ground. You, you, you literally did a miracle in our, uh, in our lives. And every single year at this month, we're to commemorate what you did. And it's a season of miracles even today. If God could do a miracle back then, he can do it today. So let's praise the Lord for miracles coming our way right now. Miracles, miracles. We're in a season of miracles. Back in September, you know, we kicked off the Miracle Seed campaign. I didn't know that Passover the whole month was called Miracle Month. I didn't know that. And so God's been teaching me, and I'm trying to share with you some things. Some of you are like, Pastor, you're crazy today. Yes, I'm crazy because I'm getting into alignment with heaven and I'm trying to get the church in alignment with heaven. Because when we get in God's timing and we expect what God wants to do, we move forward and we see miracles happen in our lives. And so we have to get into God's timing. Amen? I'm sorry I don't have sermon notes for you, but... Uh, uh, I, you can jot down notes right on your neighbor's arm and <laughs> call them later in the week and, and all of that. But this is, this is good, okay? So, <clears throat> so we're expecting miracles. All right. So the other thing that I learned, though, is that, um, that, that nisam, the root word, means miracles. So I, I, I want to talk a little bit about the greatest miracle. We can take a moment and talk about our salvation the next slide is Exodus 12. This is the first Passover. What did they do? They put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of their lives. Right now, I want you to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your life. As Christians, we apply it because I would take communion this morning, but I got too much other stuff to do. We're going to get into some other things. Amen. But I want you to put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your life right now. That means your health. That means your finances, that means your family, that means your kids, that means your home, that means your transportation, it means everything about your life. But the blood of the lamb, Jesus is our Passover lamb. Yes. Hallelujah. He's our Passover lamb. But it says that the blood will be a sign for you. So back then, when they put the blood of the lamb by faith, Moses said, I want you to slay that lamb. Then you're going to cook it. You're going to cook it standing up because you're going to go somewhere. I want you to hook up that robe and get ready to run, right? Are you guys ready to run? Are you expecting a miracle from God? Yes. See, the first Passover, they had to get ready for what God was going to do. They didn't, they didn't cook the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost thinking, well, we're going to be here another 400 years. They were getting ready to shift with God. They were getting ready to believe God for a miracle, right? And so they were to eat it ready with their robes hooked up on their belt, with their legs showing, all their hairy legs, getting ready to go with God. 
Amen. They didn't even have time for a pedicure. They were, they were getting ready to go. Amen. And uh, it says the blood will be a sign. So what happened? So the devourer came into Egypt. And the firstborn of every Egyptian, including Pharaoh's home, the firstborn died. The firstborn of their cattle, firstborn of their animals, the firstborn died. What happened for Israel? The blood was a sign. The devourer had to pass over them. How many of you know that as you become a Christian, that you, the blood of Jesus covers you Right now, when the enemy looks at you, and when God looks at you, you're covered in blood. Did you know that? The blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus is a sign. The problem is, is if you forget what's happened spiritually to you and what you look like spiritually, the enemy can come bother you, and you've got to tell the enemy, can't you see what I see? I'm covered in the blood. You dare not come near me. You must pass over my home. You're going to pass over my job. You're going to pass over my paycheck. You're going to pass over my retirement. You're going to pass over my children. You will not touch because I'm covered in the blood. Amen? So the blood is a sign. And then God said to Moses, this is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. So that's what the Hebrew people do, those that are believing, as they celebrate. So uh, beginning on the 22nd Monday, uh, uh, a week or and a half or so in front of us, through the 30th, they're going to be celebrating this great miracle, right? This wonderful miracle. Some of you, <clears throat> uh, well, let me get to one other verse. I, I have to do Psalm 105. Psalm 105, so in the Psalms, it tells us what happened that night that, that one whole nation of about two million people came out of Egypt. Right now, there's, a, there's like two million people who want to get into Egypt from Gaza, and they can't because that border's closed. But thousands of years ago, there were two million people called the Israelites, and they came out in one night. They came out of bondage. They came out of Israel. Pharaoh said, okay, go, go. I'm tired of all these plagues, right? And so the Psalms tells us what happened that night. It says he brought, meaning God brought Israel laden with silver and gold. One of the largest uh, wealth transfers of the world happened when Israel, the nation, the Hebrew nation came out of Egypt. They were to go to the Egyptian, their, their, uh, they had been serving people, they had to go to those people who had been their masters, if you will, and say, give me all your silver and your gold. The Lord told me, okay, here. And they gave them all the silver and gold and they were heavy laden. Can you imagine these people coming through the Red Sea carrying all the silver and the gold of Egypt? I mean, we forget that, don't we? And so God sent his people out of bondage with wealth. Turn to your neighbor and say, when I came to know Jesus Christ, I have supernatural wealth. I am heavy laden with the wealth of the Lord. Amen? God wants to bring provision to you as well. And then it says, and from among their tribes, no one faltered. What does that mean? It means no one was weak. They didn't stumble. They didn't faint. They didn't see decay. They weren't overthrown. It means no one was sick. Can you imagine 400 years of slavery, every generation building bricks with their hands, being beaten down, uh, you know, what, what that bondage was like back then. And they came out and supernaturally God touched their bodies, touched their feet, gave them, gave them sandals that they could walk in for 40 years. They didn't have any blisters on their little toe. They didn't have a blister on their heel. They came out and there was no feeble among them. If they were feeble before, when they came out, God touched them because of the power of the blood. Amen? Amen. So let's put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of your life, on the doorpost of your body, on the doorpost of every single area of your life. We don't want sickness. We don't want affliction. We don't want disease. We don't want anything. 
Last Sunday, I mentioned to you that sometimes we have to recognize that we're in a spiritual battle, and uh, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but even before Janet and I went to Scotland to visit her, her, her mother uh, for her 90th birthday, I had some eye stuff going on, bacteria going on in the eye, had a couple internal eye styes, and my eyes were all itchy and fuzzy, and it felt like there was something, there was something, and it was bothering me. So I went on one round of antibiotic drops, go to Scotland. I thought it was better. And then a couple days later, it all came back. And then by the time I came home, I went to the doctor. They gave me antibiotic drops again, but this time antibiotic uh, pills as well. They said, this will knock it out. Took that. They were still there. I come to service last week, share it with you. This week, they're gone. Amen? Why? Because sometimes you have to realize that you're in a spiritual battle. Last Saturday night before I arrived here, I didn't know if I was going to be here because my mom ended up in the emergency at the Mission Hospital, ended up being taken in. They did all these tests, and every test came back negative. And so uh, she had high blood pressure, and they got it back down. She's home. She's fine. But all that to say, she, she came home uh, Sunday night, every test from the MRI to the CAT scan to the echocardiogram, every test came back perfect. Nothing wrong with your mother. Amen? And so a lot of times we're under attack and we don't know it. Turn your neighbor and say, I got to be aware. I have to be aware of what's going on. Amen? Because we, we have the blood of Jesus that covers us and we need to know sometimes that we're in a spiritual battle. All right? Are you all with me? Are we, are we in God's timing? Okay. All right. So we're in God's timing. Uh, <clears throat> the Passover is in front of us. And um, I believe that God has some things for us as a church over the next week or two weeks that we're going to be believing for. Okay. And um, I'm trying to see where I am on my notes because I've been kind of talking extemporaneously and I had some things here. Oh, the other thing, yes, here we go, thank you. Just keep doing the slides and I'll, I'll, follow, I'll follow you, Misty. <laughs> so Nissan, this month that we're in, which is the first month, right? Nissan also is called Aviv because it's springtime. So remember we had Easter and it rained on Easter? <clears throat> it never rains on Easter. Normally if it, it does rain, it always breaks for a little bit, you know. But this is the month of Nisan or the month of Aviv, and it means springtime. And so I took a picture outside my window, right? This is our little garden that God has given to Janet and I. And we were able to go out on Wednesday and Thursday night and enjoy our garden and all the flowers and the birds and the chirping and everything else. How many of you are starting to see springtime is coming, right? It's just starting, right? Even though there's a little rain today, might be a little bit today, who knows? A little, there was like a little cloud that went by yesterday, dumping rain. Springtime is coming. What does springtime mean? So it means that the long winter is over, and it means that there's a change of season. So turn to your neighbor and say, the long winter's over. Winter is over. It's a change of season. God has a change of season right now. So God, God is doing something different. <clears throat> now, one of the things that happens is the Lord led us to do the Miracle Seed campaign starting in the fall. And so as I've been praying, uh, the Lord's been showing me the seeds in the ground. How many of you have been praying over the seeds, the breakthrough seeds? Over the, we've been praying over people who just gave last week and the week before. We keep praying over all these seeds. And so I've been praying for the seeds that they would blossom and that they would bloom and that miracles would begin to happen in people's lives and that we would begin to see new life, things blossoming because the winter is over. So this is what's happening. It's not just something in, in the natural, but I believe that this is something that's happening in the spirit as we get into God's timing. This is a time of new life. The things that have been planted in your life, the things that you've planted in the kingdom of God, God is bringing that and blossoming that and things are beginning to be seen and the beauty of what God has is beginning to be seen. Amen? Okay, so <clears throat> next slide. 
So last week, that was all about the timing of God. And then last week, we talked about getting a biblical principles for moving forward with God when we're facing opposition. How many of you felt like this last winter, this last year, there's been a lot of opposition? You've been hitting some things, right? There's been some opposition, right? And so we're, we started last week looking at the story in 2 Chronicles about Jehoshaphat getting word, he's the king of Judah, and he's gotten word, he's heard now, that there's three armies coming against him, right? Three armies. <clears throat> Last week we talked about the court of three. God likes to do things in threes, right? So you pray, where two or three are gathered, I am in the midst of them. Where any two will, will, uh, will agree together, right? And then I will do, my father will do that, right? So God likes to do things in twos and threes. Well, the enemy likes to mimic God's plans. So the enemy will try to have a cord of three to block you in and to try to cause havoc so that you're stuck and there's bondage, right? So we saw in 2 Chronicles 20 that Jehoshaphat got word about three armies coming against them. So he got everybody and they began to fast and pray and then God spoke to them through a prophetic voice, one of the sons of Asaph. He spoke and said, hey, the battle is the Lord's. Don't be discouraged. Don't fear. The battle is the Lord's. Turn to your neighbor and say, whatever you're facing, the battle is the Lord's. Okay? <clears throat> and so the battle is the Lord's. Don't be discouraged. Don't be overwhelmed. Don't be, you know, uh, and don't be afraid. And then he said, just go to this point, uh, to, the, to the pass at Ziz, and you are to stand. And so then what we see is that Jehoshaphat, in verse 21, it says, after consulting the people, right, because they've heard from the Lord now, it says, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed people to sing to the Lord. And to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the where? At the head of the army. So uh, what did they do? He, he, you know, they're, 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 they have this word not to be afraid. They have this word that three armies are coming. And they're to go to this one location where God told them to go, to this pass. And they're to stand there. And what did he send in front? He sent the singers. He sent the worshipers. He sent the praisers. And what were they doing? They were standing in front of three armies and they were singing, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Here's all these armies and they've got their swords and they got their arrows and they've got their, their Goliaths and they got this and they got that. And here's the singers, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. So he sends the praisers and the singers in front, right? So we're starting a church in San Francisco. The Lord spoke to me about Marvin. Get Marvin to come. We got to have the singers. We got to break through in San Francisco, right? And so he sends them in front. And then what was the result? What happens when we begin to praise the Lord, right? It says <clears throat> at the very next slide, I believe. It says, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, the Moab, and the Mount Seir. So the three who were invading them, God ambushed them. God took care of the enemy. God defeated, it says that, and they were defeated. Everybody give a shout to the Lord. <clears throat> okay. Now, last week, we looked at how in the world did Jehoshaphat know to send the praisers first? Why did he send the singers in there? Well, it was because they understood the principle of Judah. They understood the principle of Judah. We talked about that last week, and I want to go into that. But first of all, let me just say this. So Jehoshaphat and his men... They went to carry off the plunder. So when the enemy flees, there's the plunder, right? There's all their stuff. There's the stuff that the enemy left behind, right? And it says there was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. 
So mark your calendars three days, right? Took three days to collect it, right? And it says, and then on the fourth day, they assembled in the Valley of Baraka, where they praised the Lord. So they not only praised at the head of the battle, but then when the enemy was defeated, then they praised the Lord in the Valley of Baraka. And the Valley of Baraka is the Valley of Praise. Everybody say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so this week I was praising the Lord. I'm going around my house. Janet came up to the office, you know, and she was working here. But I'm all around my house. I'm, I'm walking in the living room, shouting to the Lord, praising the Lord, going out in the garden. I'm going upstairs. I'm praising the Lord, inviting God's presence. I'm decreeing breakthrough. And all of a sudden in my spirit, I said, Lord, I'm in the valley of Baraka. The enemy's already defeated, and I'm in the valley of praise, and I'm going to receive three days of the plunder. Hallelujah. Amen? So I, I've already been to the valley of Baraka. Amen? I've already seen what it looks like to see God victorious, right? Because you begin to praise the Lord, and you're going to see the end of what God already has for you. Amen? So how many of you want to visit the Valley of Brock and live there? Yeah, that's right. We always been taught the valley ain't a good place. You want to be in the mountaintop. I want to be in the Valley of Brock. Hallelujah. Because I want to see everything and praise the Lord for what he has done. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Okay, so <clears throat> I want to go to numbers now because how did Jehoshaphat, how did he understand that the praisers had to go first, right? Yeah. So Numbers chapter 10, when, when the people came out of Egypt, they were in the wilderness, and God set up for them, the 12 tribes, how they were to be encamped around the tent of meeting, which had the Ark of the Covenant. So they knew how to be encamped, all 12 of them. On the east side was Judah, why? Because Judah had to be at the doorway to the tent of meeting. You don't get in to meet with God until you praise. And then when God wanted them to move out of the camp, God spoke to Moses. And he said, this is how I want the 12 tribes to shift and move. When my cloud of glory and when the fire at night begins to move, that means I'm moving you on. And when you see that, I want the tribes to get up, and this is how I want them to follow me. Well, guess who's going to go first in all the tribes, right? Judah, right? So it says they set out this first time at the Lord's command through Moses. The divisions of the camp of Judah went first. Everybody say first. first. So when God begins to do something new in your life, when God begins to lead you into battle, when God begins to do something in your life, you need to go first with praise. You begin to praise God, and then revelation comes. You begin to praise God, and then the answer comes. You begin to praise God, and then the enemy's defeated. You begin to praise God. That's the first thing that you do, is you get your life of praise up and running. Amen? That's why today we're talking about praise and God's timing for a second Sunday because we have to get into God's timing, what God is doing. But we also have to be people of praise and God wants us at the Glory Center to go to a new dimension of praise. We have to go to a new place of praise. We can't stay where we're at. We need to move forward. We got to shift and really praise the Lord and pierce through to what God has for us. Amen? So Judah, we talked about this last week, Judah, the tribe of Judah, Judah the name means praise. So when Judah would go first, it meant praise goes first. When Judah was camped by the, by the tabernacle door, it means you don't get in to meet with God, you don't hear from God, you don't get God's answers until you start with praise. Everything was designed that praise Judah went first. So all the people of Israel, they were praisers, but one tribe, they majored in praise, right? 
That, that their whole life was about praise. You know what? In the New Testament, we need to have our whole life about praise. We need to go first with praise and then God begins to shift and to move. Amen? Uh, do I have a slide about... Uh, yeah, we do. So a couple more uh, scriptures. <clears throat> so the, God gave Moses the instructions on how to move the people, right? We talked about Judah going first. But it says earlier in Numbers chapter 10, verse, verse 5, they had a trumpet blast. And it says, and when a trumpet blast is sounded, the tribes carrying, uh, camping rather on the east are to set out. So there would be a trumpet blast and then they would move, right? Then there was another trumpet blast and they would come together and meet. They had different types of trumpet blasts. But one trumpet blast in verse nine says this, when you go into battle in your own land against an enemy who is oppressing you, everybody say oppressing. oppressing. That means pushing down on you. That means sorrow, sadness, heaviness, anxiety, fear, burdens, anything that is pushing down on you. When you're going into battle, uh, God said, sound a blast on the trumpets then you will be remembered by the Lord your God and rescued from your enemies. What would happen? When you sound the trumpet to go into battle because something's oppressing you, because the enemy has come against you, because there's anxiety in your life, because you can't sleep at night, because something's going on in your children, something's going on with your work, something's not right, you sound the trumpet. How do you sound the trumpet? Well, God's word says our mouths are our trumpet. So today we sound the trumpet with our praise, right? And so we sound the trumpet so God remembers to come and rescue us. Amen? I want you to stand for a minute. <clears throat> this is more of an activation than it is a sermon. I hope you know that by now. Now the picture that I put there is a picture that somebody drew for the, some little kid's book, but it's a picture of Jericho. What happened uh, in the story of Jericho is that God, the very first battle for the people of God when they're in their promised land, they had to come against Jericho, this fortified city, huge big walls. They even had houses in their walls. Remember Rahab? She and her whole family lived in, lived in the wall, right? She had, to put the, uh, she had to put a red cloth, hang a red cloth in the window so that her family and she could be delivered. That represented the blood. Yeah. And God told the people of Israel to march around for seven days, <clears throat> right? And they weren't to say a word. And then on the seventh day, the the priest at the front with the Ark of the Covenant and with the trumpet, they were to blow their trumpets and then the people were to shout, right? What is that? That's your trumpet shouting. That's joining in with God. And in the Hebrew, in Joshua chapter 6 and 5, the Hebrew says, the original language says, and when you give a big shout, God is shouting to heaven, from heaven. Right? Because that's what it said in Numbers 10, verse 9. It says, when you hear the trumpet and you're going into war, you're going into battle, <clears throat> God will remember and come and rescue you. So when you give the shout, which is the trumpet sound, God hears and he joins with the shout, his trumpet, and he comes and he delivers you. That's the power of praise. That's the power of praise, amen? So, so this, <clears throat> I want to do this right now because I think this is such a great picture. I want you to understand what is it that you're coming against? What is it that, is it a sickness? Is it some division? Is it something that's been burdening you? Is it anxiety? Is it whatever it is, whatever situation, it could be financial. Whatever that thing is, 
I want you to picture that, but then I want you to give the shout to the Lord and watch as God comes to rescue you. Hallelujah. Because that's how the walls of Jericho, some, some people believe that the walls of Jericho were like 12, 12 feet across. The walls of Jericho, when they gave a big shout, the walls came tumbling down. The enemy wants to try to make you think that whatever you're going through is an impossibility. But God is a God of miracles and he operates through praise. When you give the blast, when you give the shout of the Lord, God shouts with you and things begin to crumble that the enemy tried to surround you with, right? And God wants to bring the victory today, amen? <clears throat> Let's give a big shout to the Lord on the count of three. Everybody practice the first time. Give a shout and say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah, okay. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> on the count of three, I want you to know that when you shout, God is shouting and the walls are coming down. God has come to rescue you. Amen? You ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah! 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 Pretty good. Okay, I want to get into something else. Sit for a moment. <clears throat> so two aspects of praise, real quick. Number one, Judah, the name Judah, comes from the Hebrew word yada. Yada is one of about 12 different words in your Bible in the original Hebrew that are translated into English as either thanks or praise, okay? So yada is one of the words in Hebrew for praise or for thanks, right? I'm not gonna go through all those scriptures. What does, so Judah means praise and Judah, Judah, Judah comes from yada. Everybody say yada. You're actually saying Judah, okay? Yada means to extend the hand. All right? So one of the words for praise, and Judah's named after praise, so can you imagine when those people, Jehoshaphat said, you singers get up there and sing, you know, give thanks to the Lord, his love endures forever. Do you know what they look like? Judah was doing the yada. Amen? Some of you have your favorite dance. You know, you're going to take, pick the apple, put it in the basket, pick the... We have to learn how to do this. This is the dance of praise. Right? Now, when I'm praising the Lord, and sometimes when I feel like there's a battle going on, my hands just automatically go up, too. What is that? It's because you were designed to praise. You were actually made to praise God. Right? So, yada, or Judah, means praise, and it means to extend the hands. What does it mean? It, it came to mean to praise with lifted hands, and it means to give thanks, to glorify God's name. So lift up your hands right now and just begin to thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this springtime season. Thank you that the winter is over. Thank you that we are in a season of miracles. Thank you that Passover is still coming up, that we're getting into alignment with heaven. Lord, we thank you that we are Christians and that we're not bound to Passover, but we are interested in God's timing in the earth. And so we decree that our Passover is still coming for miracles, a miracle season for our church. Lord, for a miracle season for each and every one of us, we praise you for your timing and for your ways. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord. We praise you. We love you. Amen? Okay, so when you lift up your hands and you yada, or Judah, right? One of the meanings is I'm going to thank God. I'm going to glorify God. I'm going to love God. 
And I want you to think of a picture of a little child running towards that child's mother or father with hands out. Mommy, 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 pick me up. Daddy, 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 pick me up, right? And so when we need to feel God's presence, when we need to be lifted up, when we need to be picked up, what do you do? You come running. Daddy, daddy, daddy in heaven, Abba, Father, come and pick me up. I love you. I praise you. I thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Lift me up. Get me out of the pit. Lift me up. Carry me through this season. Lift me up. Do so. Put me in a spacious place, like David said. Amen? And so that's a beautiful picture of how we can, how, how we can extend our hands to the Lord to thank him, to glorify him, to love him, to worship him. Amen? Amen. Second thing, I think we're going to skip through. Um, <clears throat> there should be another. Yeah, there we go. Judah also, Judah, Yada, has a second meaning. So Yada means extending the hands in battle. So it, it doesn't just have the one meaning of extending the hands to say, thank you, God, I praise you, right? But Judah was also the tribe of war. Jesus comes from the tribe of Judah. He not only was the Lamb of God, but he's the lion. Amen? And so it means to throw a stone, right? It means to to throw a spear. It means to use a weapon to defeat the enemy. So have you ever been, you know, just battling and you're praying and you're praying in tongues and then you're praying in English and you're coming against whatever's binding or whatever and you just begin to go like this, right? This is yada. But this is yada defeating the enemy. Amen? And so we can yada... And we can yada. You might be left-handed. Yada. Ah, yada. I'm yada. And what, is, what are we saying? We're saying, God, you're greater. God, you're amazing. You are a miracle-working God. I might be sick. The doctors might have no hope. But God, I'm going to yada. And I decree that you are over my life. I decree that you're over the doctors. You're over the scans. You're over it. I don't care about these symptoms. But Lord, you're going to bring me through. In Jesus' name, I come against everything that would come against me. Amen? And you just begin to praise the Lord and decree who God is. Now, Psalm 149, we saw this last week. It says... Uh, to, may the high praises of God, you see that somewhere, Misty? May the high praises of God be in their mouths, right? And a two-edged sword in their hands. What does that mean? It means when you begin to yada God, God, I just praise you. God, you are almighty. God, you're, gonna, you're my healer. God, you're, you're my Jehovah. Lord, you're Jehovah Rapha. You're over the enemy. This sickness must bow in the name of Jesus. You just begin to praise the Lord. You're yada in God, right? It's like a sword in your hand. And the enemy is defeated. The enemy flees. Amen? One of the, one of the things that... I just came across that I thought was really interesting about Satan. It says in Ezekiel chapter 28, many of you know this, a description of Lucifer who fell from heaven as one of the archangels, right? Used to be one of the top worship leaders, was, was the worship leader of heaven. That literally in Satan's body, the, his body is made of pipes and timbrels, symbols, Symbols and pipes and everything else, right? It'll be interesting one day to see what Lucifer really looks like, right? So why does our praise defeat the enemy? Because when we begin to praise God and yada God, do you know that Satan hates our praise? Because our praise reverberates in his body. 
the praises of God. God, you're amazing. And Satan's like, no, you're not. He's trying to, hold, you know, because his body begins to reverberate from your praise. And so that's why Satan runs from people who praise the Lord. Amen? If I were to play a guitar string over here and had a guitar over there, the guitar strings over there would begin to reverberate. So when I begin to praise the Lord, Satan's body literally begins to reverberate from the praises of God's people. It says that God is enthroned in the praises of God's people and Satan is trying to shut down all the reverberations because of his timbrels and his pipes, how he's made, how he's created, and he runs and he flees because he doesn't want to hear how good God is, how his love is enduring, how we can give thanks to the Lord because he never fails, how we have a faithful God, we have a good God, sing praise to the Lord, give thanks to the Lord because as we do that, Satan runs and he leaves his plunder behind because we are going to be in the valley of praise. Amen? So David, he wrote the Psalms. He knew how to yada the Lord. Thank you, God. Psalm 8, he said, Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. Right? He wrote all the Psalms, almost all of them up to chapter 72, when it says, Thus concludes all the sung prayers, the sung hymns, the psalms of David. He said in Psalm 28, he must have seen some kind of thunderstorm, and he, he just declared God, he saw something, and he would declare God's wonder and how almighty God, God, your voice is like the thunder. God, your voice is piercing and breaking the cedars. God, your voice is this. God, you're amazing, and he would worship the Lord, even in a thunderstorm right? Everything that happened, he began to praise the Lord. Here in California, we don't like rain. We like to stay home. Here's David out in the middle of the fields of Judea. Bring me the thunder. That's like the voice of the Lord. Let it break the cedars of Lebanon. Let it cause flooding in the land because God is over the flood and he would worship the Lord no matter what came his way. Amen? So David knew how to yada. We have the Psalms. Everybody say yada. yada. Right? David comes from the tribe of Judah. He knew how to yada. He was a professional yada -er. <laughs> Remember when he was just a young boy and he, won, he came against Goliath? <clears throat> I think there's another slide. So Goliath came against the... I think there's a couple slides before that. Goliath came against um, the people of Israel. So all of the Philistines were there. And uh, I think there's a slide before that. The Philistine, he said, This day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. So they had this big Philistine army. Then you had in the valley, you had the, the Israel army, and, and there was King Saul. And they had this giant, some of the scriptures say he was a champion. He came from the, probably the Nephilim, right? But he was this huge giant, and uh, he was undefeated. So he said, he, and it also says that he would taunt the Israelites night and day for 40 days, right? So whenever you feel like you're hearing the voice of the enemy, night and day coming against you, it's that spirit that the enemy, and, and I tell you what, you need to rise up like David rose up and conquer the enemy, right? So he said, hey, this day I, I defied the ranks of Israel. And they were all afraid. They were hiding. They were terrorized. They saw this big guy. And he said, you know what? Forget the, forget the armies. Just give me one guy. I'm going to kill him. And then that means that we won, right? So... David's brothers were in the military. They were in the army. Saul, here's King Saul. They're all at the back of the line. They're hiding. Everybody's shaking. Nobody wants to come and face the Goliath. How many of you know that Goliath might be big, but God is mighty? <clears throat> so David shows up to bring food to his brothers. His dad sent him and said, leave the sheep. Go 
I want you to go to the camp of Israel. I want you to go feed your brothers. Uh, here's some uh, donkeys full of food and full of, go feed the armies of the Lord. So he arrives and he sees, he sees uh, this Philistine. He sees this giant. He sees this champion. But, but when, when <clears throat> Goliath said, I defy the ranks of Israel, you know what David saw? He saw the Lord through the left shoulder of this, of this uh, Goliath. He saw that God was bigger than this Goliath. Why? Because he knew how to yada. He'd already been glorifying the Lord. He already knew that God was bigger than anything, that God created the heavens and the earth. He's like, who's this little giant guy? You know, what's this little puny guy? So he says, <clears throat> who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You know what? Sometimes we need to say that about our kids. Who is this spirit? What is this filthy spirit that's trying to devour my child? What is that filthy spirit trying to steal my inheritance? What is that filthy spirit trying to take away what God has promised me? What is that spirit that is trying to, what is that giant that I'm facing that's trying to do this or trying to do that? David, he always saw the Lord as bigger. Amen? And so what did David do? <clears throat> well, he knew how to yada, but he also knew how to yada. So Saul tried to put him in his armor, give him a sword, and give him a shield. And he was walking around, this little skinny dude, little young guy in this big armor. He goes, no, I can't go to battle with this. So he discarded all of that, and he got five stones from, from, the, from the river. He got his slingshot. Because why? He knew how to yada. What did he do with this? He didn't just sling a stone that got Goliath right there and fell Goliath. What did he do? He said, <clears throat> you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and I'm going to cut your head off. What's that? That's yada. Amen. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come with the victory of Jesus Christ and I begin to praise the Lord and you sling your slingshot and Goliath cannot stand because God's praises are bigger than the enemy. Amen? I, I love this one picture. So yada means to praise, to extend your hands in praise. Everybody rise up. It also means to extend your hands in spiritual battle. Amen? So I've asked Joe to come and... Uh, Joe, why don't you do a little bit of praise first? Let's do the first praise song that you guys did. Can you do that? Praise. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's do the song praise, and I want you to praise the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, I hope you wore deodorant today. I'm putting my <laughs> arms up. Come on, everybody. Lift up your hands. We're going to praise the Lord. Amen? <clears throat> Drowning. 
As long as I'm breathing. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise when I feel it, and I'll praise when, when I know. I'll praise cause I know you're still in control. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. My praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. As I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul, oh praise the Lord, oh my soul. I won't be quiet, my God is alive, so how could I keep it inside? Praise. Calls your sovereign, praise calls you rain, praise calls you rose and defeated the grave. Our praise calls your faithful, praise calls your true, praise calls there's nobody greater than you. Our praise calls your sovereign, praise calls you rain, praise calls you rose and defeated the grave. Our praise calls your faithful, praise calls your true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, come on. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Sing it again. Praise. won't be quiet my god is alive so how could i keep it inside i won't be quiet my god is alive so how can i keep it inside i won't be quiet i won't be quiet my god is alive so how can i keep it inside? sing praise Put your hands together, clap. Here we go. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to have them do one more song. It's called In Jesus' Name. But before we do that, just quick about the offering. Four different ways to give. We encourage everyone, everyone to give to the Lord, to give in your tithe, to give in your offerings, to give in your miracle seed. It's not too late to give miracle seed. We're extending that time. We want to give out the miracle seeds. So I encourage you to go to the back table, get an offering envelope, get, a, get your uh, offering ready. You can also give in cash. So we encourage you to put it in an offering envelope. You can give by setting it up on our website on the giving page. We encourage you to do that. Once you set it up, you can also text to give. 
by texting that number and give glory. So we encourage you to give all the ways that we have for you to give because giving is part of our worship. It's part of our breakthrough. So I just encourage you to do that. Joe, you want to give us in Jesus' name? We're going to close with this song this yeah. morning. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, fighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies.